every other week at this top security test center in Southern California, former NASA astronaut Joe Henry Engel, who was the commander of two space shuttle missions, buckles into the pilot seat of a truly remarkable aircraft and prepares to blast off into orbit. The craft he will be piloting will accelerate to a speed of over 15,000 miles an hour before boosting into the empty stillness of space. However, this is the X-30 simulator, a full-scale, real-time mock-up of what will be the fastest plane ever to take off from a runway. This new space plane would advance aviation technology beyond anything imagined before. The project team's goal was to prove the experimental X-plane can demonstrate the ability to fly directly into space from a runway on Earth. In February 1986, 24 years after President John F. Kennedy's famous speech, we choose to go to the moon. Only 17 years after the moon landing that followed, another presidential challenge was laid before the world. So yes, this nation remains fully committed to America's space program. We're going forward with our shuttle flights. We're going forward to build our space station. And we're going forward with research on a new Orient Express that could, by the end of the next decade, take off from Dulles Airport, accelerate up to 25 times the speed of sound, attaining low Earth orbit, or flying to Tokyo within two hours. The public was excited, even enchanted with the prospect of traveling from Washington to Tokyo within two hours. President Reagan's A New Oriental Express had already, to a degree, started with a project called Copper Canyon. The project was a Defence Advanced Research Projects Agency program of 1984 that studied an air-breathing single stage to orbit or SSTO vehicle concept. The SSTO concept was considered validated and now led directly to the X-30 National Aerospace Plane Project of 1986. Like all X-planes, this one is designed to test a range of technology including new materials and propulsion systems. Its ultimate goal was to develop a new kind of space vehicle, one that would ultimately replace the existing mainstay of the space program, the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle, composed of an orbiter launched with two reusable solid rocket boosters and a disposable external fuel tank, it carried up to eight astronauts and up to 23,000 kg of payload into low Earth orbit. When its mission was complete, the orbiter would re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and land like a glider to either the Kennedy Space Center or Edwards Air Force Base. The last flight was July 21st. 2011. Uh, with a single stage to orbit vehicle we can fly directly from uh, from our point of departure an ordinary runway fly straight into orbit without losing or having to throw away any parts of the airplane and from the perspective of operating costs simplicity lower complexity uh, it has a lot of advantage. But while the advantages are clear the challenges of flying directly into space to say the least is daunting. One of the advantages of staying in the atmosphere is that you can get the oxygen from the air to feed the engines. Um, that means that you don't have to carry that oxygen with you. Now what goes along with that is the fact that the airplane has to operate at very high speeds in the atmosphere and as a consequence sees high temperatures. Much much higher than, than say uh, a space shuttle or a, 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 a typical expendable rocket would say. Exactly. 
atmospheric heating had been a focus of research since the start of the X-15 program of the 1950s and was a crucial factor in the design for new materials for the shuttle. But the X-30 will experience much higher temperatures on the shuttle and for a much longer periods of time, so the material to construct the X-30 will have to be revolutionary. In some parts of the X-30 structure, liquid hydrogen at minus 300 degrees centigrade will be used to cool the inside of the aircraft's skin. The outside of that panel may be at 3000 degrees centigrade. These materials must not only be able to survive extreme thermal stress, they must be very light and very strong. To meet these needs, new titanium and ceramic structures are being developed and new test methods devised to explore their capabilities. This is a 40 megawatt argon plasma wind tunnel in which the combined effects of high temperatures and aerodynamic loads on some of the more vital engine parts can be analysed. But a further problem challenges the X-30 designers. Advanced as these tests seem, it's almost impossible to actually duplicate the flight conditions to which the X-30 or its engines will experience as it flies through the atmosphere at Mach 25. None of the wind tunnels available at the time could produce such airspeed for anything more than a few milliseconds and sustain such high temperatures. High speed wind tunnel facilities above Mach 8 simply didn't exist at the time. Only now in the last 10 years or so can wind tunnels such as the Lens X wind tunnel operated by Calspan University at Buffalo Research Centre can achieve the hypersonic speeds necessary to test the latest ultra-fast aircraft and space planes. Undaunted, the X-30 designers solve such problems with supercomputers. These are used to create imaginary wind tunnels. Numerical laboratories in which data from a host of separate flash tunnel tests are integrated into an overall data result. These combined results would produce the pressures and temperatures the X-30 and its components will experience. Supporters of the National Aerospace Plane X-30 believe within another year or two both the material scientists and the aerospace engineers will be confident enough in their predictions for full-scale aircraft to be constructed. By 1995 the X-30 could make its first flight and these computer simulations may become a reality. Utilising data retrieved from astronaut Joe Engel's countless simulator flights, it's anticipated by 1997 the space plane may be flying at Mach 25 to the edge of space and back. If all goes well, and by the dawn of the millennium, the X-30 will be routinely flying into orbit. The X-30 was cancelled by Congress in 1993, before a prototype was completed. Although much development work in advanced materials and aerospace design was completed, questions were raised as to why it had been cancelled. It's likely the interest shown and the investment made by the United States Department of Defense changed the project's original scope. Instead of developing Ronald Reagan's New Orient Express, low orbit craft that could reach Tokyo within two hours had now become an even more complex project. It's entirely possible the project was some kind of elaborate cover for a very secretive development of a highly advanced technology space vehicle. Throughout the project's lifespan, great political change had begun to occur, culminating with the breakup of the Soviet Union and with it the ending of the Cold War in 1991. NATO troops in Europe began to be stood down and budgets for defence in most cases began to be reduced. One thing is certain, the X-30 project costs began to rise. The 1984 Copper Canyon project, regarded as Phase 1, proved the X-30 was a viable concept, its cost was $3 billion. 
Phase 2 was originally costed at $3.3 billion, largely funded by the Department of Defence, but as Phase 2 progressed, the cost had tripled to over $10 billion. Phase 3, to build the first prototype, was likely to add another $7 billion, with a further $10 billion to $20 billion to fully develop an operational vehicle suitable for commercial and military use. These increasing costs and the perceived threat from the Soviet Union now very diminished could have been another factor in cancellation. Another factor was a project far too ambitious for its time. Significant advances in supercomputer number crunching and wind tunnel Mark 25 testing facilities were still another 10 years away. These would be needed to meet the complexities of hypersonic speed, especially in attaining speeds above and beyond Mach 25. Here is a screenshot of NASA's official webpage headed Rockwell X30. It was last updated August the 7th, 2017. Clearly the X33 program developed significant advances as stated on the NASA's webpage, but it certainly doesn't go into any detail, so it could be possible as a direct legacy of the X30 advanced technology demonstrator project, heavily classified high technology vehicles are flying high above the Earth at hypersonic speeds beyond Mach 25. So the last possible explanation for the project's cancellation is the project met its goals by developing significant high temperature materials and a working hypersonic propulsion engine such as an early prototype supersonic combustion ramjet or scramjet. So the need to go to phase 3 of the project and build a full size working prototype was no longer required. Instead, future space vehicle projects would use and build upon the success of X-30. The wait wasn't long before a more modest hypersonic program culminated in the unmanned 12 foot long X-43 HyperX. Fitted with a supersonic combustion ramjet or scramjet engine which in 2004 recorded a velocity of Mach 9.6. This made it the fastest known aircraft on record. The legacy left by the X-30 project will continue to influence advances in hypersonic flight for many more years to come. Thanks for watching. Please show your appreciation and support my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.